Hello everyone, welcome to the series on Dental Anatomy. In today's video, we will discuss about Permanent Maxillary Central Incisor, its chronology, dimensions and morphology. But before moving forward, let's recap some of the basic concepts. First, the term incisor is derived from Latin word incidior, which means to cut. Hence the name itself reflects the function of the tooth that is cutting of food. That brings us to our second point that is the function. Incisors are used for cutting the food and for this they have sharp chisel shaped edges. The third point is position. As the name permanent maxillary central incisor implies, the incisors are present in the maxilla or maxillary arch and are centrally placed. The incisors are present on either side of the midline at the center of the maxillary arch. Now coming to the chronology. The permanent maxillary central incisor erupts at the age of 7 to 8 years. It is the third permanent tooth to erupt after permanent first molar and lower central incisor. The first evidence of calcification is seen at 3 to 4 months. The crown formation is completed by the age of 4 to 5 years and the root is completed by 10 years. Next we will look into the dimensions of the tooth. The overall length of permanent maxillary central incisor is 23 to 24 mm of which the crown length is 10 to 11 mm and the root measures about 13 mm. The mesiodistal diameter of the crown is 8 to 9 mm at the maximum or crest of curvature and 7 mm at the cervix. The labiolingual diameter is 7 mm at the crest of curvature and is around 6 mm at the cervix. Now coming to the tooth morphology. First we will identify the surfaces, line angles and point angles and then we will study the tooth from five different aspects that is labial, lingual, mesial, distal and incisal aspects. The permanent maxillary central incisor have four surfaces and one incisal ridge. The surfaces include labial, lingual, mesial and distal surfaces. Coming to the line angles, there are six line angles. These include mesiolabial and distolabial line angle that is mesiolabial and distolabial line angle mesiolingual and distolingual line angle that is mesiolingual and distolingual line angle and labio incisal and lingo incisal line angle that is labio incisal and lingo incisal line angle the permanent maxillary central incisor have four point angles. These include mesio, labio, incisal, disto, labio, incisal, mesio, lingo, incisal, and disto, lingo, incisal point angles. So now we know that there are four surfaces and one incisal ridge, six line angles and four point angles in permanent maxillary central incisor. Now let's study the tooth from different aspects. Starting with the labial aspect. The labial surface of the crown is usually smooth and it appears symmetric and rectangular in shape. Symmetric and rectangular in shape with the cervico incisal length more than the 
मीजियो डिस्टल विथ इन न्यूली इरप्टेड सेंट्रल इंसाइजर वी कैन सी मैमेलॉन्स ऑन द इंसाइजल रिज एंड डेवलपमेंटल लाइन्स सेपरेटिंग द टूथ सरफेस इंटू थ्री पार्ट्स नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द आउटलाइंस ऑफ द क्राउन द मीजियल आउटलाइन is slightly convex being almost straight and the crest of curvature is present near the mesio incisal angle the distal outline is more convex than the mesial outline and the crest of curvature is present at the junction of incisal and middle third also the distal incisal angle is more rounded compared to the mesio incisal angle and it is an important point in determining the sides of maxillary central incisor that is the mesio incisal angle is less rounded when compared to the distal incisal angle the cervical outline is formed by the cervical line and it is semicircular in shape with the curvature towards the root the incisal outline is formed by the incisal ridge it is usually straight and regular and tend to curve downward in a mesio distal direction now coming to the lingual aspect the lingual surface is more irregular and has both concavity and convexity the mesial distal incisal and the cervical outlines are similar to those seen from the labial aspect however it presents important features such as the cingulum lingual fossa mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge the cingulum is found on the cervical third of the lingual surface and it develops from the lingual developmental lobe remember we had discussed in our previous video that the anterior teeth develop from four developmental lobes anterior teeth develops from four developmental lobes which includes mesial distal labial and lingual the mesial distal and labial lobes manifest as mamelons that can be seen on the incisal ridge and the lingual lobe develops as cingulum another important anatomic feature seen on the lingual surface is the lingual fossa the lingual fossa it presents as a concavity or depression incisal to the cingulum the lingual fossa is bordered cervically by the cingulum cervical border is formed by the cingulum incisally by the incisal ridge that is incisal border is formed by the incisal ridge mesially by the mesial marginal ridge and distally by the distal marginal ridge next we will move to the mesial aspect from the mesial side the crown appears wedge shaped or triangular in shape with the base at the cervix and apex towards the incisal ridge an important feature to note here is that the incisal ridge is on a line with the center of the root if we draw a line through the center of the tooth it will bisect the apex of the root and the incisal ridge of the crown this feature is characteristic of maxillary central and lateral incisor and can be seen from both mesial and distal aspects coming to the outlines of the crown the labial outline is convex with maximum convexity at the cervical portion and slight convexity towards the incisal ridge the lingual outline is also convex near the cervical portion at the cingulum followed by concavity at the marginal ridge and again slight convexity towards the incisal ridge the cervical line outlining the cemento enamel junction is curved in an incisal direction and this curvature is greater on the mesial surface than on the distal surface on an average the curvature on the mesial side is around 3.5 mm as compared to 2.5 mm seen on the distal side 
The incisal outline is formed by the incisal ridge. It is rounded in newly erupted teeth but later on becomes flat due to occlusal wear. From the distal aspect, the crown is triangular or wedge shaped similar to that seen from the mesial aspect. Similarly, the labial outline of the crown is convex from the cervix to the incisal ridge with maximum curvature or crest of curvature present coronal to the cervical line. The lingual outline is convex at the cervical portion followed by concavity at the distal marginal ridge and slight convexity towards the incisal ridge. The cervical outline is curved in an incisal direction and the incisal outline formed by the incisal ridge is straight. As mentioned earlier, the curvature of the cervical line on the distal side is around 2.5 mm. One important point to note is that the central incisor appears somewhat thicker towards the incisal third. This is because the labial surface slopes distolingually to adapt to the dental arch curvature. So more of the surface is seen from the distal aspect creating an illusion of greater thickness. Finally, coming to the incisal aspect. From the incisal aspect, the crown covers the entire root and the tooth appears triangular in shape. The base of the triangle is towards the labial surface and the apex is towards the cingulum. The labial outline is relatively broad and flat in comparison to the lingual outline which is tapered towards the cingulum. The incisal ridge is clearly visible from the incisal aspect and it can be differentiated from the incisal edge. Now, one important point to note here is that the incisal ridge is a linear elevation on the incisal aspect. That is, incisal ridge is a linear elevation. On the other hand, the incisal edge incisal edge represents an angle formed by merging of two flat surfaces which are lingo-incisal and labial surface. That means the incisal edge is an angle formed between the labial surface and lingo-incisal surface. So that was all about permanent maxillary central incisor. In the next video, we will talk about permanent maxillary lateral incisor. Till then, if you found the video helpful and informative, then do like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such informative content.